Welcome, Fight Fans, to the FN Studios. I'm your host, John Ramdeen, alongside the newly crowned Glory Middleweight Champion, Simon Bad Boy Marcus. Yes. How do you feel getting this title? We know if you look back at your history, you're the belt collector. You have a ton of titles, a ton of accolades. But right now, glory seems to be at the forefront of everybody's mind in the kickboxing yeah. world. Does it mean anything different than your past accomplishments? Uh, most definitely. Uh, I feel like it's the pinnacle of uh, all organizations. And of course, I made the transition from Muay Thai to kickboxing, and people kind of questioned whether I could be as successful. So to win the, uh, the largest kickboxing world title on the biggest stage is quite an accomplishment for me. So. so one of the things I wanted to ask you, has that been an easy transition, making that move, trying to adapt to the glory rules? Uh, I wouldn't say, yeah, it's been easy. Like, uh, it's just been challenging. It just challenged me in different areas, but overall it hasn't been like a, something very difficult for me to do. I feel it actually plays into some of my sh other strengths uh, doing kickboxing as opposed to Muay Thai. So I like, I like both challenges, you know. When you started this journey, uh, did, you, did you have everything mapped out? Did you know what you wanted to accomplish in the sport? Um, yeah, in a sense, I wanted to be the best. Right. And that was it. You know, I didn't, I didn't know how I was gonna get there, but I just fought as much as I could. Uh, climbed the ranks from bottom to top and, and uh, kept getting better, kept training. And when the opportunities came, I was ready to capture them. So I've been, I've been blessed in that sense. Using your brain, I, I think when we see, we've seen that you spent time training with some of the best here in Canada. Yeah. And then you, you travel to train with the best abroad. Yeah. Is that important to go and get different looks from, from different trainers and training partners? Uh, I, think, I think it's, it's important to see the world, what's mm -hmm. in the world, because uh, you know, it doesn't matter what country you're from, where you're training, but uh, you have to see what's out there, what's, what's different, why, why are fighters good from different parts? And of course, go to the places that the best fighters come from and see for yourself firsthand how they train and what it's like to train with them, and that's what I did, so. Leaning into your fight in Chicago, uh, they say iron sharpens iron. You had the mm -hmm. chance to go to Thailand again to train with one of the legends of, of Thai boxing in Bokaw, Bokaw Banchimek. Uh, tell us what that experience is like and what type of relationship you have with uh, Bo Kao. Uh, it's, 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 um, it's something out of uh, a comic book, you know. He's the best fighter in the world, the most, one of the greatest legends from Thailand. And um, I've had the opportunity to train with him in the past where I spent like eight months training with him. And that's part of what made me great as well. Uh, being able to see how the best trains and what it takes to be at that level. But uh, if, just to be able to uh, train with and get knowledge from and uh, take lessons from someone that's a legend and considered the best is just, uh, I mean, it's a blessing. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very prestigious to be able to get that kind of information and that kind of uh, care from someone who's, who's so good at what they do. So uh, I just continue to learn. I'm still a student of the game. Uh, I'm the best in my weight class right now, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's kickboxing or Muay Thai, I've beat all the best fighters, but I'm still learning and I'm still improving, so I'm just uh, looking to continue to dominate and uh, I have a, a, a long way to go, actually. Now, I've had a, a chance to hang out with Bokao a couple of times. There's a language barrier there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how was that? Is that an easy thing to, to get past? Um, I, I'm, I'm, pr I'm almost fluent in Thai, so I wouldn't say I, I, I'm fluent, I can understand everything, but I can get an understanding, so. Was that trial uh, by fire, or did, or did you have to go and specifically I, learn? I, I spent over, uh, over, over a year and a half, close to two years in Thailand over, over the years, so uh, just being there throughout the time, I've picked up Thai, and my former trainer is also Thai, so we, we would learn certain words in the gym. So I've, I've picked it up over, over the time. I think, uh, if you look back at kind of the history of kickboxing, that a lot of fighters are tied to other fighters because yes. uh, kickboxing isn't like mixed martial arts or boxing where, you know, two fights and that's it. It can be four fights, right. it can be five fights. One of the names, Artem Levin, I think you're gonna be right. linked with forever. Right. What, does that mean anything to you? Uh, most definitely. Um, I fought Artem three times. They've all been world title fights and, and we always seem to meet at the top. Right, it's just me and him. It's the question of who's the best, 
And um, in my opinion, all th three times I've beat him, uh, the, of course, the controversial draw. But um, it, 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 it's, it's a fighter that, that I, have to, I have to bring my A game when I, when I fight this guy. You know, he's, he's amazing. He's a great fighter, and uh, I, I give him a lot of respect. But I know when I fight this guy, I have to prepare and bring my A game. But it also, uh, it's, uh, it's something I enjoy. Uh, someone who pushes me to my limits and making sure that you know I'm, I have to be better than when I fight other fighters. So it, it, he's he's someone special. So, so the second fight you have with Artem Levin, yeah. uh, you say that you always have to be on your A game. You were on your A game. Yes. I think most people saw that yeah, you were on the yes. A game, on your A game. And even when you're on your A game, that things kind of happen. And uh, what 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 did you think of after after that happened? Because if you look at the kickboxing world. Most uh, most people believe that you won that right, fight and you right, should have been the champion right. there. Uh, it's ruled a draw. What was going through your mind? Um, it was just like I couldn't I couldn't really believe it at at the time that you know. In my mind, I had had the fight won. Of course, uh, he had a point deduction, which also made it like no doubt in my <laughs> mind that I was ahead on the scorecard. So when they called it a draw, I just felt like kind of robbed that. You know, I worked so hard and and fought my way to to getting the title shot, and then even when I win the fight, still, you know, they they call it a drop. But um, I mean, did it give you extra motivation when you knew that there would be a third fight? Oh, definitely. I mean, from the moment I entered Glory, I had one. My I was on the prize. You know, uh, in any organization, in anything, I have my eyes on the prize. I believe I'm the best. So. Where, whatever the world title, whatever the number one spot is, that's what I believe I should be. So uh, even when things don't go my way, my, my, my eye is still on the prize, you know. So even though I, they called it a draw, I just knew I had to come back and, um, and make it happen again by any means possible. The third fight in Chicago, again, strange circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One point taken. Yeah. He's, what, what, what did you think? Did you believe at the time it, it was a knockdown that he should have been ta that first point should have been taken? Of course, the other two points, they were, they were legit. But the first point, there was a lot of debate out right, there whether right, or not right, that first point right. should have been given. Is that something that you focus on in, in the fights, or is that, have you had a chance to look at it afterwards and I've, assess? During, during the fight, you hit a guy, he, he falls out the ring or he gets knocked down and the ref counts them, you're just sure. staying, keeping, keeping your mind on the focus. Okay, that's one point for me, but I'm not gonna get overzealous, you know, I'm just gonna continue to fight my fight. But looking back on the fight, the glory rules state, if you off balance someone and knock him down, that's considered a knockdown. Right. I off balanced him and I hit him before I hit the ground. So if the ref considers that a knockdown, I, I'm not going to disagree sure. with the ref because if, if it was if it was against me, on the other hand, it would be the same yeah, thing, right. you know. So it's I part did, of the game. Exactly, I did turn him and off balance him, but what actually I knocked him down with the weapon, and he didn't get up right away. So I seen the ref start counting him, you know. So it, pe people call the, the the fight a little bit uh, controversial or or whatnot, but to me it was it was just plain as day. Do you like something like that, having to deal with uh, challenges that you may have not dealt with in the past? Because I'm sure as a fighter, uh, after the second and third point were taken, and he was, it was very strange, his behavior mm -hmm. right, inside right, right, of the right, ring right, that yeah, night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was that throwing you off at all, all or were you just, okay, I'm focused, don't worry about he, what he's doing, when yeah, it's time to fight, yeah. fight. Well, this fight in particular, I was just so focused. Um, even with the second point take, getting taken and the, the third point getting taken off of him, or the second point getting taken off of him, um, I was just keeping my head on the game knowing that I had to still win the fight. You know, I didn't expect for him to give up in the fashion he did, so. Was it easy to uh, keep your emotions in check in the sense that two points down, it's gonna be very difficult for him to win this fight definitely, at this point? Definitely, uh, I knew I was ahead on the scorecards. I knew I had to finish the fight without basically getting knocked out, and um, and uh, I. But I wanted to to beat him down. I wanted to you know make it concrete. I wanted to knock him out, but I don't think he was really willing to have that kind of fight with me for another two rounds, knowing that his option of winning on points was was already gone. So he just threw in the towel. You're the best in the world. Everybody considers you the best in the world. How does the best in the world get better? 
Uh, the same way I got to the point of being the best, you know. Um, it's, it's about uh, being a perfectionist, you know, striving for excellence. Uh, to be the best in the world doesn't mean I'm the best version of myself yet, you know. I might be better than everyone else, but uh, I can compete with myself every day, continue to improve. Um, I have lots to improve, you know, um, just getting started. So I'm looking to keep dominating, uh, representing for Canada, of course, and, uh, you know, bringing those belts home, those trophies home. You said that uh, next training camp most likely going to stay yeah. on home soil yes. uh, here. Who are you working with? Who, who, who are helping you get better? Uh, I, got, I got my own team right now. I got uh, past training partners, present training partners, uh, different trainers, uh, different people for different things. So I just kind of put my own thing together now and, and uh, I have more control over how my training camp's gonna go and whatnot, depending on who I'm fighting. We're told uh, middleweight uh, contender, Dustin Jacoby could be next in, in your right. sights. Uh, have they given you a timeline? Just, we were talking off camera, May is when you're hoping to get back in there. Yes. Anything concrete from the Glory organization? Um, nothing concrete yet. We're still, uh, I'm still waiting to get, get the go ahead for when and what, uh, who I'm gonna fight, but um, I'll be back in the ring defending the title soon and, and I, uh, I escaped the last fight with no serious injuries, so I'm looking to uh, stay on top of my game and bring it home. Thanks so much for the time and uh, yeah, all the best and continued Thank success you. in your Thank kickboxing you. career. He is the Glory Middleweight Champion, Simon Marcus. Don't forget to tune in to Five Rounds every Monday at 8 p.m. where Robin Black and I break down all the topics in the landscape of combat sports.